and welcome to The Female Gaze. We have a lot in store today. We will look at our stories as women artists and really dive into our processes and what art means to us as women and artists. First, I want to introduce us. I'm Melissa Dorn. I'm an artist here in Milwaukee. I work in uh, multiple mediums, as does Ann Baer, who is also here with us. Ann, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. That's great to hear. I'm excited to chat further with you, but first, let's take a look at Jean Wells and her story as she makes pottery. My medium of choice as an artist right now is clay. I work in clay and primarily functional pottery. Jean Wells is a very accomplished artist in Milwaukee that creates things with clay that people can use in their daily lives. Over the years, she has perfected her craft. Well, originally, I mean, I, I, school, I, when I was young, I loved to draw, right? I loved to draw and make things. And actually, the real inspiration came in high school when a visiting potter came into our school and um, talked about what he did. And I, then and there, I was like, oh, I definitely want to see if I can pursue this as a profession. I did go to art school and I majored in ceramics and I minored in portrait painting. And when I was deciding which direction to go, I chose ceramics because I knew it was the more physical of the two jobs. And I thought, well, I'm young, I'll go into the more physical taxing job. It's hard to pick a proudest moment. Um, you know, since I just recently passed my 30th anniversary kind of working full time as a potter here in Milwaukee, that made me feel really proud that I was, that I've been able to continue to do it through recessions, um, through um, different challenges, having a family, uh, that I'm still able to create and sell and make a living. Art is essential for not only the people that create it, it is meaningful to communication and culture in a society. Art is very important. I think it's really critical um, for us as community and it's culturally important because it helps define who we are. Um, even simply pottery, I think, can speak a lot about a culture, right? We study historically pottery and um, Art tells a story. It's a different type of storytelling. It's visual storytelling. And I think it just helps us understand who we are as people. Uh, and it also brings joy into our lives and beauty. Um, so I do think it's art is real critical for who we are. I think everyone brings their own identity into their work through art. So being a woman, being a mother, um, being a child, right? A daughter, a child, to someone. I think all those influence what we make and who we are, for sure. Being a woman um, in my field, so I started back, I guess you could say, in the late 80s, early 90s, and it, it felt like a male-dominated field to me. At least those were my peers around me. And there are several women, though, that um, I, were my mentors and were really important. It was a little, it was intimidating. You know, I kind of grew up in the 70s and 80s, so the era of women kind of breaking out of their traditional place was kind of what I was introduced to in a way. Um, but I think the field has definitely grown and changed, and um, I've been mentored by multiple women in the past. But the men in my life, too, have been great mentors in terms of the potters in my field. Jean has been involving her craft for many years. She looks back at where she started. If I could talk to my younger self as an artist, I, I guess I, I laugh because I do feel like I was naive. Although I do think it was a good thing. Let's say if I had a business plan early on, which I did not, um, yeah, I might have scared myself from um, going into the field, uh, but uh, what else would I say? Charge more a little bit in the beginning than I did. <laughs> What's my favorite project? Well, 
gosh, there's a lot of different things I've done. So I've been a working artist for over 30 years here in Milwaukee. So um, I have a lot of different projects that I've attempted. Most of them have been for other businesses. Like I'm, I'm known for a group of mugs I did over the years for Colectivo Coffee, their sugar skull um, design I created for them. That was really fun. I also um, was asked to do pottery for the U.S. Open Championship, which was held in Erin Hill, Aaron Hills, just outside of Milwaukee um, in 2017. And that was quite an experience. So those, those were things, kind of larger projects for me that I don't normally do because I'm a single potter and I do single batch stuff that I sell for myself directly. So that, those were two fun things that I did. My biggest piece of advice is don't stay in a shell. Get out, join some other artist groups, and search for mentors, that's critical. Jean's story is really inspiring. It is amazing to not only see her art, but to see her run a successful business. As artists and women artists, what are some struggles, and uh, that you face when it comes to making your art? Not having enough time to do it not because I'm cooking or cleaning or doing anything like that, but because there's so much paperwork. Um, entering shows, filling out applications, none of them are the same. Um, choosing uh, what piece should be sent in, the, you know, pictures of it. Um, you know, is it, is it available or is it at another show? Is the frame in good shape? Things like that are just sometimes very overwhelming. Oh, I completely agree. I know that um, I'd much prefer to spend my time actually making. Mm -hmm. And yes, none of the applications are the same. No. Uh, and I don't think folks think about that when they think about life as an artist. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, like we've known each other for quite a while, but I don't think I know how you got started in art. Can you talk a little bit about that or what drew you to it? Well, if you want to go way back. Sure. It started in kindergarten. Yes. We had a visiting, well, she was a big girl. I don't know if she was 16 or 20. Um, and she drew a picture and then I copied it with the blue line for the sky and the green for the grass. And I got compliments on that. And I just knew immediately that I was going to be an artist. But the real time came when I took a class from Thea Kovac. And it was a week long. Food was prepared for us. All we did was work and have fun. And um, I walked out of the dorm one day and sat down on a stump and started to cry. And Thea said, you know, what's the matter with you? And um, I think it was because it was the first time that I could actually say that I'm an artist. That's amazing. Um, I also know Thea, and she has had an impact on me as well. Um, and I know that you were also an educator, or maybe still are. Uh, and I find it amazing the impact that educators can have for instance, going back to those first compliments that you received in really building oh, yeah. somebody's um, confidence up, right? Uh, can you talk a little bit maybe about one or, yeah, one of the projects or works that you're working on right now? Well, I'm, I'm doing an empty chair project. I started it in, during COVID. I was so overcome by the number of deaths. And so I got to thinking about people having empty chairs at their tables. And so I am deconstructing and constructing chairs into other forms. I mean, they still look like chairs. Um, I have one right now at Akwe Nguvu, and um, it's uh, kind of a throne and because I had gotten to know um, some African-American women, and I'm included in their show, I 
I think it's a throne about the king who was taken into slavery and his throne is empty. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you work across a lot of different mediums. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> do. Do you have any particular challenges navigating the different mediums? So you do painting, sculpture, um, I'm assuming some drawing. Yeah, not much drawing. I've never been a good drawer. Uh, what's up here just never seems to get down there. But um, I think one thing informs the other. And um, I just, I, I just, you know, m my ideas are kind of like leaves. They just poof, poof, and, and come out of my brain. And some of them I pick up and go with, and some of them not so good. Um, my son brought home some of those pull tabs from a tavern and uh, well first it was going to be 48 by 48 and when I found out how much work it was now it's 20 by 20 <laughs> <laughs> and I wish I had made it 12 by 12. <laughs> I have been there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I also do love pull tabs. Uh, so I'm fascinated <laughs> to see that. Save them for me. I, I will. I haven't gotten one in a while. <laughs> now I have a reason to. Yep. Um, the way you describe the ideas coming to you, um, I think I knew that mostly from watching Instagram and the way that you uh, seem to have no fear uh, for any material and how you grasp and hold on to ideas and form them into something that we can all um, dive into, I guess. Like uh, using pull tabs, it's something that's relatable to everybody. So I think that that relatability in your work is really fascinating. Thank you. And, um, and we can see that in some of the work that you brought with you today, reusing materials. Well, I'm pretty emphatic about uh, global crisis and uh, you know I was raised by people who were from the depression and so you know we don't waste anything right right and I think it we ought to turn back to that yes thank you uh, let's take a look at another female artist story Kathleen Poles a very accomplished painter as she talks about her art Right now, my medium of choice are acrylics. She is an artist, a painter, a woman, a mother, and so much more. Kathleen Poles has developed her technique over time. You know, lately I've been working on uh, 12 by 12 Creole board panels and um, I took this course online and um, one of the things I learned and this was two years ago during the pandemic is uh, to get four boards or more all set up and so that you're continually working with something and because you can find sometimes that you know you're you get really excited about something and um, and then you you don't know where to go from there. So a good thing to do is to start on something else because it seems to unlock uh, any sort of pressure that you put on yourself when you're trying to create something that you like. So, so after that, then um, after they're done, well, I'll go back and forth with them. Um, but when I feel pretty good about something, um, then I'll, I'll uh, put a coat of acrylic uh, medium on it and let that sit for a while, then maybe put another coat and then I'll put some wax on it to finish it because it, it gives it a nice sheen, um, a lot like uh, an oil painting. Kathleen has always been intrigued by art, but as a young woman, she felt that she needed to choose between being an artist and a mother. I came from a large family and there weren't a lot of supplies for art, but you know, I, I made do with what I had, like uh, Kleenex boxes and um, you know, we just didn't have much. Um, and then in high school, 
you know, of course I took art classes, I was interested in that, and but I really wasn't sure if that's what I wanted to do with my life because I thought I'd have to, I figured I'd have to get a job and it didn't seem like there would be any sort of job uh, being an artist. So, well then I ended up going into TV. But before that, um, I did take some more classes at UWM and um, there was a professor there that said, you know, if you're just gonna be a Sunday dabbler, then you're in the wrong field. And I thought, that's maybe just who I am, I don't know. And um, so at that point, I, had, I started having children and I figured I would just put that on the back burner until I um, was ready to come back. Well, I think the biggest struggle I've had uh, is having to choose, so, you know, I, I was a young adult in the 80s and you had to choose, you know, there really wasn't seemed to be an option for women to have a family and uh, pursue art. And I think it was harder for women for sure to be uh, accepted or liked in, in, that, in that world. And so for me, um, what gave me a lot of joy, I always wanted to have a family. So I pretty much chose that it wasn't until uh, my son received some prestigious awards uh, in high school that uh, I guess I felt like I had the confidence to, to actually do it. and get, I gave myself permission to do it. And my kids were growing and, and they were all into their own things. Kathleen uses art as a way to find herself and understand who she is in the world. Uh, for the most part, I feel like I'm connecting with myself and how I see the world, how I see myself, how I feel about things, about what I think about, um, what I'm involved with. Uh, it's, it's like my, without sounding corny, but it's, I, I feel like it's my soul, it's my spirit. It's, it's um, I have this body that I can do something with that, with my interpretation of the world. But it's, uh, it's really finding connection with myself and connection with the world, but really myself. Don't give up and don't be so hard on yourself and nothing, you know, mistakes are part of uh, becoming a full human being, I think, and becoming, um, a, yeah, a full human being. And mistakes you'll find in your in practicing your art, but that's how you learn, just like life. Um, so just don't be, just don't give up. Just keep going, keep doing it, and trust that it's it's you're going to come to yourself. You're going to come to the best part of who you are if you continue to go. Don't give up. What an amazing story from Kathleen. Having to feel like you have to choose is definitely a struggle that women have to face. Um, and also the perceptions of society. Um, and do you think that the way uh, the public or society uh, has treated women and women makers, has that changed at all, do you think? Or are we still running into a lot of the same challenges? I think there's still a lot of the same but it definitely has changed. You know, I was raised in the 40s and 50s as to be a creative housekeeper. And um, I went to an all-girls college run by nuns. I was shocked in 1963 to graduate and find out that women were nothing. We had no power at all. So yeah, I think it's changed a lot. We have a ways to go. We have a ways to go, yes. I, it was interesting um, because I teach college uh, as well, and uh, I was having a discussion with one of my uh, women students last night, and she was talk talking about like her middle school years and the way that um, she was treated in the wood shop. We happened to be in Maya's 3D lab, which is a fantastic uh, place to be. And I was surprised that it didn't feel like things had changed much at all really? in the way that she was treated. 
uh, in not having expectations for women or girls no. as they... I would not have been allowed to take wood shop. Well, there we go. It, that, yes. it probably would have ruined my reproductive organs or something. <laughs> At least that was the myth, right? Yeah. Um, how do you think, has there been anything as you look um, over your history as an artist that you've come up against specifically that has proved to be a challenge that you think was because you were a woman artist? You know, most of my work has, you know, my getting myself out there has been done more in the last few years. Okay. So there have been times that I've been suspicious, but um, nothing that was blatant. Not, yeah, I would say no. Yeah. And you work in a very physical manner, uh, creating sculpture, which... Right. Um, yeah. And you you do, I believe, sometimes work with, like, contractors or other folks. Um, well, I have a son who helps me with construction sometimes. Yeah. Um, if it's a larger piece. Uh, you know, I really like to work large, but, um, you know, physically I'm just not capable. And... Uh, but, you know, I've gone out and um, had things spray painted. And, uh, I mean, nobody's very interested in, you know, a, a body shop is not interested in doing one little sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't done one little sculpture. No, You've no. done yeah, many. Yeah, but they each have to be a different color. <laughs> right, right. True. So it, to them it was one. I think I went to 50 shops and was sent away with, without getting what I wanted. I thought somebody would say, oh, wow, this is cool. I would think so, too. Yeah, but no. Um, do you think it was because it w just wasn't enough to be worth their time, or they just were like? I think they were afraid of possibly damaging it oh. or, you know, something legal. Um, you know, and I did find one guy who was all excited about it, and uh, he even found wood parts for me. He, his, uh, his girlfriend would go through all their kitchen drawers and bring me rolling pins and oh, yeah. <laughs> things like that. Um, that has to be a really interesting aspect of your work because you work with um, recycled or already used materials. Mm -hmm. um, people give things to you, I'm assuming? Right. Once they know that what you do? Once, once they know that, you know, I might have a use for something they're getting rid of, I will find it on my front porch. Um, you know, it'll, somebody will say, oh, I've got this for you. Sometimes it's really great and sometimes it's not. And I have some friends who really have a good eye. Uh, some of them walk together Oh, yeah. And they will pick up things as they're walking around on garbage days. Oh, yes. Like bedposts. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Um, Jean and Kathleen's stories are very encouraging to future artists, but also to me as an artist myself. To see other women create amazing art and run successful businesses. We only have a few minutes left in the show, but before we leave, let's get to know Anne a little bit better. Um, you've shared some of the projects you're working on right now. Is there anything you want to add to that? Well, I do have a solo show coming up. Excellent. I have to deliver on March 28th, and then uh, we have an, a reception April 20th, I think. Okay. And where is the oh, exhibition? This, this is at the Anderson Art Center in Kenosha. Oh, okay, nice. And I, I got it because I got first prize in one of their other shows. Congratulations. Yeah, pretty excited about it. Is there a theme to the show or? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the theme. It's kind of some of my pet projects, or my, my pet causes. Um, I'm gonna have a, a piece about gun violence um, some pieces about uh, recycling. Um, and because it was sort of short notice, I'm going to have to recycle. 
some of my old projects. Not old, just former. Former projects. Yeah. Which goes well with what you do anyways. Yes, which is it does. Including uh, found objects yeah. and recycling quite a bit mm -hmm. um, from the work that I've seen. And um, I really look forward to seeing that show. So I when did you come. say it opens again? Um, April 20th. April 20th, okay. So, um, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. That is all the time we have. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm Melissa Dorn, and thank you, Amber, for being here. It was fun. Have a good day, everyone.